My question, how will you convince senior citizens that Social Security and Medicare need to be changed and get their vote? Good question. Let me begin with the Michelle Bachman, Congresswoman. How do you do that? How do you go ahead and change, reform Social Security, Medicare, while at the same time getting votes? Well, one thing that we need to let senior citizens know is for those who are currently on the Social Security system, the United States government made a promise to senior citizens, and we have to keep that promise to them. But we also need to know that for those who are not yet on the system, the system simply has to be reformed in order for it to work. The same goes with Medicare. We know that President Obama stole over $500 billion out of Medicare to switch it over to Obamacare. We also know that Medicare Hospital Trust Fund will be bankrupt within nine years. These are programs that need to be saved to serve people, and in their current form, they can't. So we need to have someone who understands these programs, who, under who understands the solutions to these programs. I'm a person that's had feet in the private sector and a foot in the federal government. I've been there long enough to know the problems, but not long enough to become a part of the system. I know what to do, and I have the core of conviction to be able to make the changes that senior citizens can count on. Governor Perry, uh, speaking of Social Security, you've said in the past it's a Ponzi scheme, abs an absolute failure, unconstitutional, but today you wrote an article in USA Today saying it must be saved and reformed. Very different tone. Why? Well, first off, the people who are on Social Security today need to understand something. Slam dunk guaranteed that program is going to be there in place for those. Those individuals that are moving towards being on Social Security, that program is going to be there for them when they arrive there. But the idea that we have not had the courage to stand up and look Americans in the face, young mid-career professionals, or kids that are my children's age, and looked them in the eye and said, listen, this is a broken system. It has been called a Ponzi scheme by many people long before me. But no one's had the courage to stand up and say, here is how we're going to reform it. We're going to transform it for those in those mid-career ages. But we're going to fix it so that our young Americans that are going out into the workforce today will know without a doubt that there were some people who came along that didn't lie to them, that didn't try to uh, go around the edges, and told them the truth. Governor uh, Romney, uh, you've said that Governor Perry's position on Social Security is, quote, unacceptable and could even obliterate the Republican Party. Uh, are you saying he could not, as Republican nominee, beat Barack Obama? No, what I'm saying is that what he just said, I think most people agree with, although the term Ponzi scheme, I think, is over the top and unnecessary and frightful to many people. But the real issue is that in writing his book, Governor Perry pointed out that in his view, that Social Security is unconstitutional, that this is not something the federal government ought to be involved in, that instead it should be given back to the states. And I think that view, and, and the view that somehow Social Security has been forced on us over the past 70 years, that by any measure, again, quoting from his book, by any measure, Social Security has been a failure. This is after 70 years of tens of millions of people relying on Social Security. That's a very different matter. So the financing of Social Security, we've all talked about at great length. In the last campaign, four years around, John McCain said it was bankrupt. I put in my book a series of proposals as to how to get it on sound financial footing so that our kids can count on it, not just our current seniors. But the real question is, does, does Governor Perry continue to believe that Social Security should not be a federal program, that it's unconstitutional, and it should be returned to the states? Oh. Or is he going to retreat from that view? Let's let Governor Perry respond. You have 30 well, seconds. I, if, if what you're trying to say is that uh, back in the uh, 30s and the 40s that the federal government made all the right decisions, I disagree with you. And um, it's time for us to get back to the Constitution. And uh, a program that's been there 70 or 80 years, obviously we're not going uh, to take that program away. But for people to stand up and, and to support what they did in the 30s or what they're doing in the 2010s is not appropriate for America. But, but the question is, do you still believe that Social Security should be ended as a federal program as you did six months ago when your book came out and return to the states? Or do you want to retreat from that? I, I think we ought to have a conversation. Uh, we're having with, that right now, Governor. This, yes, we're, sir, that's, let me we're finish, running for president. I'll, I'll finish this conversation. But the issue is, 
are there ways to move uh, the states into Social Security for state employees or for retirees? We did in the state of Texas back in the 1980s. I think those types of thoughtful conversations with America, rather than trying to scare uh, seniors like you're doing and other people, it's time to have a legitimate conversation in this country about how to fix that program where it's not bankrupt and our children actually know that there's going to be a retirement program there for them. Yeah, Governor, the term Ponzi scheme is what scared seniors, number one. And number two, suggesting that Social Security should no longer be a federal program and return to the states and unconstitutional is likewise frightening. Look, there are a lot of very bright people who agree with you. And, and that's your view. I happen to have a different one. I think that Social Security is an essential program that we should change the way we're Governor, funding it to make, it, sure, to make sure. You called it You said if people did it in the private sector, did, did it what? would be called criminal. That's in your book. Yeah, what I said was. <laughs> Gov Governor Perry, you got to quote me correctly. You said it's criminal. What I said was Congress taking money out of the Social Security Trust Fund is like criminal, and that is, and it's wrong. Congressman Paul, let me uh, expand this conversation. Do you agree with Governor Perry that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme? Well, I agree that Social Security is broke. And we spent all the money, and it's on its last legs unless we do something. One bill that I had in Congress that never got passed was to prevent the Congress from spending any of that money on the wars and all the nonsense that we do around the world. Now, the other, uh, the other thing that I would like to see done is a transition. I, uh, I, I think it's terrible that the, uh, that the Social Security system is in the, in the problems, it has the problems that it has, but if uh, people wouldn't have spent the money, we would be okay. Now, what I would like to do is to allow all the young people to get out of Social Security and go on their own. Now, the big, the big question is, is how would the funding occur? All right, stand, hold that thought for a minute, because I want Herman Cain to get involved. Are you with Governor Perry that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme? I don't care what you call it. It's broken. <laughs> and here's my solution. Amen. Start with optional personal retirement accounts. In 1981, the Galveston County employees, they opted out because that was a very short window of opportunity. They took it. Today, when people retire in Galveston County, Texas, they retire making at least 50% more than they would ever get out of Social Security. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, allow younger workers to have personal retirement accounts as an option. Now, to answer this gentleman's question, current seniors will not be affected. It's to give the option to the younger workers. The Galveston County model worked, and it also worked in the small country of Chile. Instead of giving it to the states, let's give it back to the workers. That's what personal retirement accounts would do. Governor Huntsman, when it comes to reforming Social Security, is anything from your perspective off the table? I don't think anything should be off the table, uh, except maybe some of the drama that's playing out here on this floor today. I mean, to, to, hear, to hear these two go at it over here, it's almost incredible. You've got Governor Romney, who called it a fraud uh, in his book, No Apology. I don't know if that was written by Kurt Cobain or not. Uh, and then you've got Governor Perry, who's calling this uh, a Ponzi scheme. All I know, Wolf, is that we're frightening the American people who just want solutions. And this party isn't going to win in 2012 unless we get our act together and fix the problem. We all know that we've got entitlement problems, we've got Medicare, we've got social security. The fixes are there. I mean, the Ryan plan is there, for heaven's sake. We've got the answers. We don't have leadership. That's the problem. Speaker Gingrich, would you raise the retirement age for social security recipients? No, not necessarily. But let me start with, uh, I'm not particularly worried about Governor Perry and Governor Romney frightening the American people when, when President Obama scares them every single day. <laughs> now, this is eating into my time. So let me, let me, if I, let me just say to all of you. Oh, let me just pinpoint the what? question. What would you do to fix Social Security? But, okay, but can I also expand for a second? Because that was not a rhetorical joke. President Obama twice in, uh, said recently he couldn't guarantee delivering the checks to Social Security recipients. 
Now, why should young people who are 16 to 25 years old have politicians have the power for the rest of their life to threaten to take away their Social Security? Now, I, I just want to make two simple points about Social Security and how you save it. The first is, you get back to a full employment economy, and at 4% unemployment, you have such a huge increase in funding that you change every single out year projection in a positive way. The second is, you say precisely as several folks here have said it, if you are younger, everybody who's older and wants to be totally protected, fine. No change. So don't let anybody lie to you, starting with the president. No change. But if you're younger and you'd like a personal account, you would control instead of the politicians. Right. And you know you'll have more money at the end of your lifetime if you control it than the politicians. Why shouldn't you have the right to choose? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Senator Santorum, when it comes to Social Security, are you with Governor Romney or Governor Perry? Well, the question is, who's with me? Because... <laughs> Because I've been out here talking about, you know what I'm talking about, courage to tell the truth, Governor? I was out in 1994, running against a Democratic incumbent and a campaign managed by James Carville. And I went out and talked about Social Security reform. Why? Because I knew this day was coming. And I had the courage to go out and say, Social Security is in trouble. And I told a group of young people at LaSalle University that we needed to do something like raising the retirement age. They ran that on TV for three weeks prior to the election in the second oldest per capita state in the country. And I still won the election. Why? Because the people of Pennsylvania wanted someone who had the courage to tell them the truth. And I had the courage to tell them the truth. And what I've done since I was in the United States Senate is every year I proposed, I went in fact with Bill Clinton in 1997 on the first bipartisan Social Security town hall meeting, and I was the spokesperson. A Republican conservative from a blue state out there leading the charge on Social Security. You folks want someone with courage? I've got a track record of courage and a track record of concrete proposals on how to fix this, among some of the things that have been discussed here Senator, tonight. Senator, uh, thank you.